Well, I've just had another bite and you're not going to believe what it is. Uh, at the moment it's really windy, it's absolutely hacking down here, which looks good, but uh, for recording it's absolutely terrible. We'll see what happens, hopefully in the next couple of hours I get time and give our early morning should kick off. <laughs> I'm hoping anyway. Things haven't gone particularly well on this session. It's tricky so far, I've managed to lose one as well, so uh, it's just nice to get one on the bank. Well, you join me back down at Monk Lakes, I'm on the members' lakes again. I've come to the easier water because I just want to get a few bites on this session. I kind of just want to get at least a double or two will do. Um, last time I only had one 15 pounder and I did 24 hours on the other lake. And uh, yeah, this time I thought, go on the easier one, maybe I might get a few. They're going to be a lot more smaller, but you know, there is some other bigger ones in here mixed around <laughs> in between the little ones. So uh, yeah, I have to go through them before I can get something decent. Um, but I've come down to a swim that I've actually never fished before, but it is next door to the swim that I normally fish. So I do kind of know it. Um, but this one is more favoured by Joff, um, the director of Carp Basics. He likes this swim. He also likes the one uh, a little more further down as well. Because uh, it gives you a sort of a range of open water and it does give you a far margin as well. So I've decided I'm going to stay away from that margin uh, just because I've been hearing that I hasn't really done anything recently. Uh, I might have a go maybe, but uh, I've got 24 hours on my session so maybe I might get a chance to put one over there. Uh, we'll see what happens. I've decided to sort of aim towards the bars that are out in the middle. Um, these bars that are towards the end of the lake is where I'm aiming at the moment. I've decided to put all three rods on top of it because I think it's probably going to be the best chance of getting a few. Uh, it does do quite a lot of bites off that bar. They sort of come along from the island in the next sort of swim that I normally fish and then they come all the way along the bars and they go all the way along to this margin usually. All three of them are on helicopter rigs, on Ronnie rigs. It's just going to be the best chance of not tangling. I'm fishing about 70 yards out onto those bars so I don't want it to tangle at all and I've decided to put two on the same hook bait and then one on a different hook bait. Two of them are on red lobster wafters, uh, tipped off of a sinking plastic corn. I just don't want to add to any more buoyancy into the wafter, otherwise it basically turns into a pop-up. And the other one I've gone for a snowman, it's a red lobster 15 mil bottom bait and a 12 mil ocean fruit yellow pop-up on top. So uh, yeah, a bit different um, on the third one, really, because I've got two on the same and one on a different one. I just wanted to see if, if you know the bigger bait would last longer, or maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> I put about 12 to 13 spoms all along the bar. Uh, I've gone for a uh, dot spot on this session, so it doesn't actually hold that much bait. It only holds a little bit at a time, so I'm only technically putting in about eight, I reckon, with the amount of space you can fit in those. The mix is made up of sweet corn, red lobster boilies, a uh, whole and half in there as well. Um, I've also got some 12 mil all nut boilies in there as well. And on top of that, I've got ocean fruit, eight mil pellets and some six mil all nut pellets as well. So it's a different size of size of pellet, different size of boilie in there as well. Just mixing it up and trying to make it a bit different um, as a mix. I'm also adding some uh, all nut uh, glug into there as well, just so I can add some extra flavour in there and some more scent. Uh, I think it's a good mix, I think it's a good spot, good swim. I think it will do bites. Uh, at the moment it's really windy, it's absolutely hacking down here, which looks good, but uh, for recording it's absolutely terrible. So, uh, well, <laughs> that's why I'm uh, sort of stuck here, I'm actually behind the bivvy at the moment. I'm trying to get out of the wind, it's blowing right in my face. Uh, but I've, like I said, I've got 24 hours, plenty of time to try and get bites. Uh, I'm in bite time now, this is literally the time where it kicks off, so hopefully in the next hour or two I'll get a few bites. Uh, but let's see, anyway, I'll be happy if I just get two, really, on this session after the last one. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. It's been a couple of hours and uh, nothing's happened so far. It's pretty quiet on the fish front. I <laughs> uh, did see one jump about 10 foot behind my spot. Um, 
it's literally just on the back of the uh, last bar. There's like three little bars there, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much right at the back of there, just looped out. Um, but it's been about half an hour or so since then, and still nothing's happened. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Maybe they're just not feeding at the moment. Maybe when it gets into that last hour or so before it gets dark, maybe it will start working. Maybe they'll start feeding. I don't know. Well, I just thought I might talk to you about um, things that are happening on my channel and why my videos have been uh, getting less and less and also why I've been fishing at Monk Lakes for quite a bit and possibly talk about a bit about the park as well that I've been fishing. I did a couple of videos and I sort of, sort of stopped that. I thought I might just give you an update on everything that's been happening. Uh, the park, I did stop fishing it uh, only because it was getting busier in the park during the summer and I thought I'd back off a little bit and uh, now it's getting a bit more quieter I can start getting back there I've been told an area where some of the originals get caught as well so you know try that for a little while I'm gonna give it a good couple of goes before we get into winter the reason I've been fishing at Monk Lakes quite a lot is because I'm a member here so it's been easier for me to come down and just quickly get a night in or a day session um, and there's plenty of carp here and I did think I was gonna get something bigger but um, I've caught some reasonably sized carp but nothing really happened uh, most day tickets have been really really packed out and busy I've tried booking on on venues on lakes and I just haven't been able to get anywhere I've, that's why I've ended up coming back here every time um, but I am trying to mix things up obviously I'm gonna go back to the park and do a bit more of that um, I've booked on to fish the specimen lake here as well which is part of the day ticket um, at Monk Lake so you know I'm gonna try a few different things and uh, I'm gonna be trying to change up things and try and get every video as somewhere different the reason why I've changed my videos from every week to only like two a month is just because I've been filming for Carp Basics I'm a media consultant I'm getting on and doing that I'm also running their YouTube channel as well um, so I have been trying to keep up my own videos but it's been a bit hard and I felt like coming back and not doing every single week has made it easier for me as well that's what's been happening recently on my channel uh, so that's the reason my videos went to two but now my videos might end up going down to one because now I'm filming two videos for Car Basics every month so it's going to be a bit challenging to try and get out more than one or two um, so it's going to be a bit hard to do it but I think I can get around to doing at least one decent video um, I will try and do two I will will try so back to my fishing uh, at the moment still nothing <laughs> um, I'm not really hearing anything not really seeing anything uh, sun's beaming directly at me so every time I step out of the bivvy the sun's beaming straight at me uh, the wind did calm down for a little bit and then it's back to as usual thing that's why I'm sitting in the bivvy at the moment I'm just sort of sitting back and uh, seeing what's gonna happen really but yeah a few indications but nothing else is pretty boring really at the moment I'm sure I will get something before it gets dark um, but if not maybe early in the morning it might kick off because it'd be nice and cool maybe that might be the best time to get a few bites maybe it's just too warm the water at the moment I don't know um, it's only about four foot deep where I'm fishing so it's not that deep at all um, but you know we'll see what happens hopefully the next couple of hours I get something if not early morning should kick off <laughs> I'm open anyway uh, yeah no, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, I'm still confident. I'm still confident on everything. All the baits and all the spot and everything is really good. I may put a little bit more bait in because there's a lot of roach in here and they will eat most of that bait that went in. So uh, I definitely will top up before it gets dark. But I want to see if I can get anything before that anyway. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully I'll get something soon. If not, early morning should be the one. And yeah, hopefully I'll get a few bites then. So let's see.
Well, I managed to get a bite. 16 and a half pound this one. This is on the uh, Red Lobster Wafter, chips off plastic corn. It's been tricky so far. I've managed to lose one as well, so uh, it's just nice to get one on the bank. And uh, it's a reasonably good size. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get it back and hopefully we'll get a few more. Yeah. Well, I've just had another bite and you're not going to believe what it is. It's a perch. Yep, I've caught a perch on a red lobster wafter. <laughs> I have no idea how. I've never caught a perch on a boilie before, but there you go. It happened to me. <laughs> right, I'm going to get him back and uh, get the rod back out and hopefully catch a carp this time. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> Well, wasn't that an amazing perch? It's good, good thing that I'm fishing for perch, isn't it? Not carp. <laughs> um, yeah, red lobsters catch everything, apparently. Yeah, apparently they do. Things haven't gone particularly well on this session, so catching a perch has probably made it more weird, I suppose. It's an odd situation, really. I thought I was going to get quite a lot of bites, and I didn't. Uh, managed to get one bite before it got dark, about, about an hour before it got dark. And I managed to get all the way in, and then it went round the monk, which is out in the middle of the lake, and managed to snap me off on 20 pound line. It must have grated up against it and snapped me off. And then I had a few indications during the night, and I thought I would get bites, and nothing materialised, nothing happened. Pretty unhappy about that, and um, maybe I thought maybe the morning will kick off. and. I did get a bite, but since then nothing's really happened. I've recast, rebaited, and I managed to get a perch. Not exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I've decided to change my tactics slightly. Um, I'm going to keep two rods on the bait spot, and I'm actually going to bring the other one off the bait spot and pull it down on the far margin. It is quite barren along that side, but there is like a big. <clears throat> it is quite barren on the far margin. Um, it's quite barren on the far margin and there's a series of trees in the middle with some reeds and um, that is actually a really good margin spot um, so I'm going to put a solid bag on that um, the solid bag is going to be red lobster four mil pellets red lobster stick mix and a red lobster wafter little dumbbell and uh, yeah I'm going to try that out all red lobster because I'm doing well on red lobster recently so I'm going to stick with that um, but I just thought I might try a solid bag out and stick it on that spot and see if anything happens I did see a carp jump a little bit more further along um, Wasn't particularly massive, but I did see a carp over there So they might as well make some changes and maybe I can put together a few more carp um, I, I think I'll be happy if I catch one more. I'm hoping it's a scaly one because there's nice scaly ones in here I would love to catch one of them uh, but yeah, make some changes, see what happens. I'm gonna keep baiting as well. Every so often I'm gonna put a few more spawns in. If you keep the bait going in here, they can't come back and back again. So hopefully they'll eventually feed enough to get a few bites if I can. Um, but they don't generally feed past sort of 10 o'clock. So let's make the most of the morning and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get one or two. Let's see anyway. Well, that makes the end of my session. It's been tricky. 
I must admit it's been uh, more tricky than I thought it would be. I thought I was going to get a few more than that. I was at least expecting to get five or six bites. Didn't quite work out that plan, but uh, managed to catch a perch, which is unusual. <laughs> uh, still quite funny that one. Uh, I've tried really hard. Um, clearly the lake's not fishing very well at the moment. I was on the other lake last time and I only managed to get one, so they are tricky at the moment. I don't know what's going on. You think about a month or so until it comes to autumn, you think they'll be feeding quite a lot, but at the moment they don't seem to be doing much. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I think I'm doing everything right. I just don't know why it's not fishing very well. So uh, all I've got to say is thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.